r slash no sleep posted by you slash outside your window underscore there's a man who stands over my bed every night mom keeps the bottle on the top shelf right out of my reach i know it's on purpose i'm not stupid i've watched the liquid get closer and closer to the bottom we'll be out soon these days mom's at three on and 21 off it started at 12 and 12 then 10 and 14 then 6 and 18 and so on when she's awake she pretends our life is normal she toasts a dozen or so egos and leaves them in aluminum foil on the counter each morning i forage through them i have to be careful though there's months worth of leftovers up there some have fungus spewing up the sides sometimes we talk during her three hours but most times we don't as soon as she wakes up she springs from the bed like it's on fire she doesn't freshen up her teeth are beyond saving and she's stopped combing her hair, not that she could if she wanted to. Her curls are too bunched up. If she tried to comb it, it would rip off like a bad wig. When she leaves her bedroom, she tiptoes down the hallway, checking every corner for him. I don't waste my time looking for him or hiding, he always finds me. Instead, I spend my time strategically. When I'm awake, I'm preparing for the night. At school, I spend my time asking kids if their parents have what we need. If they do, I do whatever I can to get it. But, the last three weeks have been rough. The teachers caught on to my little game. Now, no one makes eye contact with me. When the bottle was full, mom gave me small swigs before her dose. It was normally enough for me to make it through the night. For the last few nights though, she's kept it all to herself. Mom, please, I said, surprising her around a corner. All I need is a sip. My friend James said his dad has a prescription for back pain. We'll have more soon. There was no James. I didn't like lying to mom, but I was desperate. She didn't respond. She shuffled past me, stepping over boxes and piles of clothes. I followed her into the kitchen. She stuffed more egos into the toaster. It coughed black smoke. Mom cursed and slapped it with her hand. Just one sip, mom, please, I said. Just for tonight. You're young, she said. Moms need medicine. Old people we're, you know, sick. Sick sick sick. Don't you trust me? You know I'm a, well, was ah, I don't. Don't you watch TV shows? Grey's phlebotomy, hey hey hey. She laughed, but it sounded like it hurt. I can't keep my eyes closed for so long, I said. He won't leave me alone. Mom looked at me. I hadn't seen her eyes in weeks. Red lines spun into the dark centers. At first glance, I thought they were bleeding. Kids don't, you know? Blah blah blah. Don't talk, back. To parents, I, I don't know, she said. Don't you watch TV? Please, I said again. I grabbed her leg. She shook me off like I was a pesky dog. Long day, she said. I'm gonna, um, I, lie down a bit. Mom pushed me aside and went into the bathroom. She grabbed the bottle off the top shelf and took a long, healthy sip. I reached up for it, but she slapped my hand. Bad kid, she said, pointing down at me. She furrowed her brow, put the bottle back, then walked to her room. I stood in the hallway and watched her door shut. A frame fell off the wall, joining the others on the floor. I looked at it. It was me and mom, standing outside the hospital. A few months after that, she came home crying, her degree stuffed in a cardboard box. That whole summer, lawyers sat with her at our kitchen table, running through the details of the surgery. They pressed her on every little detail. How many pills did you take each night to sleep? Were you groggy on the morning of the operation? How was your mental state when the blade slipped? Why did you lie about the cause of death in the report? When the trial was over, she was acquitted. We went to the local diner and ordered cheeseburgers and milkshakes. She barely ate hers. She was in a funk, but I thought it would pass. Then, the visitor came. After mom went into her room, I climbed in bed and closed my eyes. The sun was setting. Outside, cars drove slowly by our front yard. People always paused to look at us. I watched their faces search our windows for signs of life. I knew how it looked. The grass was yellow and overgrown. There was no car in the driveway. The lights were always off. Sometimes, teenagers parked out front and tiptoed toward the front door. One of them would turn the doorknob as the others giggled. Then, all at once, they would scream and run away, like our house was a ride at the carnival. Slowly, the sunlight turned orange, then red, then pink, then purple. I took a deep breath. 
I imagine sheep jumping over the moon, like mom told me to. One. Two. Three. The sheep were fluffy and graceful, casting cloud-like shadows on the craters. It was nice. But I still couldn't sleep. I pulled the blankets up to my chin. I took another deep breath. I watched TikToks. I turned on the TV, then turned it off, then on again. The static hum lulled my mind into blankness. But, when the true dark came, I turned everything off and closed my eyes. I tried to make my body completely still. Then, I heard it. He was breathing. They were rough breaths. At the end of each inhale was a gasp. No air was enough. He wheezed and spit and coughed for whatever he could get, but it was never what he needed. I knew he was next to the bed. I could taste his hot, sour breath. I tried to picture those jumping sheep. Four. Five. Six. I tried to keep my eyes closed, but my eyelids were starting to spasm. I didn't want to see him. If I didn't see him, maybe I could convince myself it was the wind, or an animal, or a water pipe. But, if I saw him, then I would know. Maybe, if I opened my eyes really fast, I could just get rid of the pain. Okay, I can do it. I opened them quickly. He was inches from my face. I closed them again. He was in my brain. His eyes were bulging and his mouth stretched in a horrified smile, like a child wincing through a sharp pain. When he saw me see him he made a deep, wordless sound. I could feel the noise. It made me nauseous. It was heavy as mud, sloshing from his stomach and right into mine. PLLLS saw. His fingers clutched my arm. I tried to shake him off, but he tightened his grip. His grey-green fingernails grew with each breath, pinching my skin like a pricker bush. Me. I squealed, my lips pressed shut. I wanted to scream, but I couldn't. If I opened my mouth, I would taste his spit. With each new groan, acid rain poured onto me. I knew it came from his stomach. That was the organ mom nicked. Even with my mouth shut, I could taste his breath. His face was inches from mine. Our breathing was linked. His sense fused onto me like the rod on the fridge. I wanted to kick and punch and stab through a tattered hospital gown. I wanted to do what my mom did to him a hundred times over only, this time, on purpose. I wanted to watch the life drain from him. But, those were useless thoughts. It was like trying to kill the wind. Instead. I thought about my sheep. Their legs looked like the old man's now, pale and stubborn, struggling to bend enough to jump. They made it a few feet before tumbling back toward the moon. Some got caught in the craters, falling into the dark pockets, suffocating in the atmosphere. 7. 8. 9. I used my fingers to keep my eyes closed. I tried deep breaths, but my lungs were filled with the visitor's spit. At a certain point, the sheep and the visitor became one. I tossed each one over the moon, but their bodies piled in the craters. I kept counting. 10. 11. 12. 13. When I hit 4433, the sun came up. I opened my eyes. The visitor was gone. In the distance, I heard mom curse as she slapped the toaster.